After all the Iaco were created and placed between the hulls, they were lashed to give Iosepa strength and flexibility. When Iosepa was completed, an invitation was extended to the community to come and learn more about Iosepa and the carvers. First of all, uh, we felt as a Hawaiian studies program that the canoe that we're building is not only for us, it doesn't belong just to us and to our program, but we wanted to be able to offer it and share it with the community because we wanted them to feel a sense of ownership that this canoe actually was a part of our community and that they all had a part to deal with it. So we had this open house to invite all of the people within our moku. For the canoe itself, I, I guess the significance of it was so that the canoe would also know that these people who have come to visit it are also interested in its well-being. So the balance that we have here is that we're talking about relationships and establishing relationships. And the relationship that we hope to establish tonight was community feeling a sense of ownership of the canoe and a canoe feeling a sense of acceptance by the community. I want to tell you that, um, that each project that I work on, I have done got a few uh, projects. I did a chair for the King of Tonga and I took it to Tonga and presented it to him. And it was not really, I, I enjoyed looking at the chair, but I went back later, about a couple of years later, and I wanted to go see the chair and I, when I look at the chair I step back and I said did I actually did that and you know I asked the same question to everything that I have done um, I asked the question even with this um, the last few days looking at a canoe and I asked myself did I actually do that there must be There must be somebody else. There gotta be somebody else. I can't do that all by myself. I, I give you thanks and to my ancestors also for who I am and to my father. I do this work because I love my dad. My father worked with wood also, and he exposed me at a very early age to chisels and, and working uh, wood. I, I used to take my mom's cleaver and preparing knives out, and I go to the beach. I put them in my fishing tackle box, so she never knew, right, that I was taking her knives and I'd find driftwood on the beach and I'd hack away and I'd make little tikis and things and I'd give them away to my brothers and sisters for their birthdays and for Christmas. And they saw that there was something there, so my dad um, purchased chisels and gave it to a six-year-old boy, you know, trusting that this child would be able to learn how to maneuver the tools uh, I myself would never think of giving my six-year-old those same types of tools. The most significant aspect of Yosepa's creation was the support, love, and hard work from the surrounding communities. The, you know, the, the support that we got from the community far exceeded our expectations. I mean, it, it was just beautiful to see so many people there, especially at the open house that we had you know, prior to the birthing of the canoe, and to also see the large turnout that we had at the actual launching and naming and blessing of the canoe. I was so happy that people came to help. If it was not for the people, I'm probably still working on it now, not completely yet. But the people came and, and, and helped a lot with all what we, what I did, so I, I, I do the things and set it up so there will be a lot of things to do. Um, I, I was not just concentrating on one area. I, I had to uh, start different things and, and let it allow the volunteer, people who come, uh, to do it. Things that I think that they are capable of doing it, of, of doing. And even, even uh, some of them never 
handle our ads before to dig the thing. When they came, I showed them how the thing works and just let them cut. I learned a lot about teamwork. I think uh, it wasn't for all the teamwork and uh, like Tuyone, he was ahead. So if we listen to him, I think any, anything we can accomplish. If we have too, like they always say, if not enough, uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians, we'll never accomplish anything. So I think we always got to focus on one person and one person should, be, should guide us, not too many chiefs. The idea of the canoe has captured the hearts and the imaginations of all of our people and have brought people together in ways that never happened before. Faculty members who would come and help on the canoe, students, people walking by on the road, seeing the activity, coming over, feeling the spirit, and then lending a hand. Students wanting to give food and coming over in the evening with McDonald's hamburgers to feed those who were still there working on the canoe. And when the canoe was launched, to see the outpouring of love and excitement. Because I think everybody recognizes that this canoe is special. Not only is it a physical object that will teach navigational skills and will actually perform a voyage, but it becomes a mighty symbol for education everywhere. When you raise in a town that is building a canoe, you know, you have all that feeling that cannot be explained. You know, it's, it's a feeling that your Hawaiian blood is in it. That's why I'm there all the time. And I learn more about the history of canoe. I'm a fisherman, but not with a canoe. It's just an ordinary boat that built by Americans, you know, and uh, so now it's built by the Hawaiians. That's why I enjoy it, coming there every day. <laughs> I mean, the beauty of the canoe and, and really the beauty of the people that built it, you know, they, uh, I'm so impressed by the Laie La community. I mean, I wish every community were like that. Seldom do will you see efforts um, that will bind the community in such a powerful way. I mean, those are volunteer hands that went in there to build that canoe. And, 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 and in our modern busy days, one of the few, one of the things we have the least of is time. When Yosepo was ready to be launched, the Halau Kukuna Okala, under the direction of John Kaimikawa, performed the Aha Aina. Out of respect for the sacredness of this Hawaiian ceremony, we did not record it. The Aha Aina in traditional times was a ceremonial eating. And it would be a gathering of individuals that were prominent and important to a certain project, whether it be building a house or, or a va'a or whatever it may be. Um, under the direction of a, a kahuna, one that had knowledge and wisdom in, in these areas, and through prayer and fasting would select certain foods that would be eaten uh, because of their ceremonial and their spiritual significance as it pertains to the project. And the food symbolized characteristics that we wanted to be a part of the va'akaulua. Um, the longevity, the way it would move through the water, uh, those characteristics were all symbolized by the foods that were eaten. And so everyone that was there has an opportunity to partake ceremonially of the, fo ceremonially of the foods and be a part of that and accept kuleana or responsibility as it pertains to the va'a. After the ceremonies were completed, the Thamakau was the first canoe to go into the water. The reason why we decided to have the Tamakau go into the, the waters here in Hawaii first was basically out of respect for the canoe, respect for the older brother. During the time that uh, the Tamakau was here, um, even though this is the same Pacific Ocean, nonetheless it's a different area, but the canoe had never gone into Hawaiian waters. And so we felt in order to make things pono or to keep it things right, that it was important for the Tamakau to go in 
prior to the launching of Yosepa. That way, in terms of our own Hawaiian genealogy, we know who the elder brother is, we know the role of the Thamakau, and we also felt that we had a responsibility, and that was to refurbish the Thamakau to make sure that it was, uh, again, uh, in a respectable condition prior to its launching. So it was something out of love, out of appreciation, out of respect for for this very important Fijian canoe that was built by great master builders in Fiji.